All right, you guys. So tonight is chapters 10 through 12. So chapter 10 is entitled Further Use of the, Your Will. And I had written at the top of this, I don't know how many times ago, quit telling your old stories. Quit telling your old stories. The first sentence says you cannot retain a true and clear vision of wealth if you're constantly turning your attention to opposing pictures, whether they be external or imaginary. And a lot of times we get stuck in sharing our old stories. This is what happened to me as a child. This is what happened to me five years ago. Here's what happened to me 10 years ago. And we do want to relate to other people or share our experiences so they understand where we're coming from. So it's a way to connect with each other, uh, which there's nothing wrong with that. But what happens is if we continually share over and over again on a regular basis, our stories of lack or limitations or of past traumas or events or things that um, weren't beneficial for us, then that really kind of keeps reinforcing those things over and over again. And so um, I was listening to an Abraham, it's been about a year ago, and she was talking about this and she said, you know, because the guy got in the hot seat and he was going to ask this question, but he wanted to tell his story first. And she's like, no, 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 I don't want to hear about your past story. Like, where are you at now? What's your question? Where are you going from here? And he was like, well, I just want you to understand where I've come from. And she's like, do you want me to understand where you've come from? Because I know where you've come from. Or do you, are you just trying to relate or connect? And he's like, well, I just want you to be able to, to know how far I've come. And so, and, and again, you know, we all have past, we all have stories, we all have things that is, that's happened in our lives, right? Whether it's losses or, um, you know, loved ones, or we've, you know, moves, or we've had um, traumatic experiences, you know, whatever, we've all had that stuff. But it's making sure that you don't stay in those patterns and habits of repeating those things to people. And that you, cause like, for example, with me, with Taylor, people say, well, what happened to Taylor? And I'm like, mm, you're going to get like two seconds worth of the stuff. And you know, like a girl the other day, she's like, well, who takes care of her? Like who gets her out of bed? Like what, ha how old was she when this happened? And you know, what, what did, what did the doctors do? A lot of people, they want to know that. Did you have a lawsuit? You know, and all these kind of questions. And I'm like, it's, it's really almost hard for me to answer. I want to be respectful and I want to answer, but I also, it's, it's, you know, it's 13 years old. I don't want to keep reiterating it. So I don't. And so I really don't share a whole lot of her story with people. Maybe the first time I'll give you like a two second, you know, or two minute um, snippet of it. If somebody asks, I'm not going to be rude and be like, no, I'm not going to tell you about it. I don't have anything to hide, of course, but I don't go down the whole path of everything that's happened to her because it, it doesn't serve me or her to have those those feelings or emotions or um, scenarios running out there rampant again, right? So no matter what it is, in this situation, we're talking about finances and abundance. So make sure that we are not telling the story of, you know, I grew up poor or I grew up this and we didn't have this and we didn't have that. That is your story. And when you share your story about a minute at the most, but here's where I am now, and then here's where I'm going. So that's super important. So in this book, you have accepted a certain theory of the universe as being correct and are resting all of your hopes and happiness on this being correct. So don't read books which tell you the world is soon coming to an end. And huh, I'm that crazy right now. The world is not going to the devil. It's going to God. And it's becoming wonderful, believe it or not, and everything that we have going on right now. Don't believe the world is coming to an end. It's not coming to an end. Isn't this crazy? 1910 and he's talking about it right now. Or I'm talking about it now, and it's very probably more relevant than it ever has been. Not really when you look at the types of wars and things like that that we've had in the past that have killed millions and millions and millions of people. And we're concerned about this teeny tiny little bitty virus. <laughs> Oh boy. Anyway, so you should interest yourself in the world, in becoming rich in the world, which you can assist the world in growing rich. The only way in which you can assist the world in growing rich is through yourself getting rich through the creative method that he talks about in here. So think of the riches 
the world is growing into instead of the poverty it's growing out of. And bear in mind that the only way you can assist is by growing rich yourself through the creative method and not the competitive one. So to become really, really rich is the most noblest aim you can have in life for it includes everything else. And it might, that might be something that doesn't sit right with you. But again, remember you're taking these principles, these things on as truth. And so you may have to take that one, you may have to write it, and you may have to write it again and again and again and read it again and again and again until you start to believe that this is true. To become really rich is the noblest aim you can have in life, for that includes everything else. When we come into the creative mind, all of this has changed. You're no longer competitive, so there is no struggle or in scrambling over power over others. The very best thing you can do for the whole world is to make the most of yourself. That is the very best thing you can do, is make the most of yourself. And he says, I repeat, as to become rich, as you must fix your attention upon your mental picture of wealth, is to the exclusion of all that may tend to dim or obscure the vision. So some people remain in poverty because they're ignorant of the fact that there is wealth for them. That's common, right? Some people don't believe that there's wealth out there for them. They're just ignorant to it. They think that they don't know any different and this is all they've ever had. This is all they've ever experienced or known. And that's it and they accept it and that's it. But these people can be taught best by showing them the way to affluence in your own person and practice. So when I used to teach, I taught in back in Indiana in a middle school and it was inner city. And so it was, um, in my area, it was the highest poverty. You know, we were like 90% free and reduced lunch as middle school kids. Um, most all of them, nobody had like a mom and a dad. Um, in my advanced class, there were like 10, 12 kids and they may have had a working parent, um, but the rest of the kids, the other 120 that I had throughout a day's time didn't have working parents. They didn't have people that were supporting themselves, let alone these, these children, right? And so, what I did was be me, right? Be me, go through my life, do my thing. Um, and over the years of teaching these kids and some of their siblings and some of their other siblings, and you know, over 10 years, you get to go through several sets of siblings and cousins and whatnot. And then of course, you know, here time goes on and a lot of them I'm friends with on Facebook. I don't wanna say a lot, I had 120 a year. So <laughs> let's just say a, a, a couple dozen I'm friends with on Facebook that are, um, are, you know, having some kind of life on social media that seems to be normal. Like one of my girls messaged uh, or commented on my post last week, she just bought her first house. Um, she was in my first class, I think. So she's like 34. Um, so she just bought her first home. So that's fabulous. Um, one of my students who actually ended up basically being my daughter uh, was here last weekend. We went boating together. She just turned 33. And so she has, she's bought her first home about a year ago. She has a great job. She's in advertising, uh, marketing and things like that. So I just had to keep doing what I was doing, you know, and some of these kids um, is with some of the people in your life and your, in your um, context that you'll come across. Some will be inspired by that and they will choose to rise up to a greater level. And I could say that about a couple dozen of the kids um, that I'm in contact with. One became a loyal customer last night. <laughs> One of the kids that I taught, um, she was so sweet, so quiet, so shy, but the girl could read a book in like a day. And I mean, she devoured books, devoured them. And um, she, you know, she has a job, she has kids and is married and, you know, um, doing well with her, her life. And she, she's like, I really don't need to lose weight, but I would like some other stuff. And my mom wants a skinny brew. And so she became a little customer last night. So, you know, some people are um, going to just watch and follow and choose to make better choices. And then there's others that aren't, but you can do the best you can by becoming rich. And that's the way to inspire others. Okay. Be best in your life. I love when he says an ounce of doing is worth a pound of theorizing. 
an ounce of doing is worth a pound of theorizing. The very best thing you can do for the whole world is to make the most of yourself. And if you get bit rich by the creative method, not by the competitive one, then that is the best way to go. There is no more scientific method of computation in mathematics than by addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So no need to read any other book at all. No method is possible. There can be but one shortest distance from two points. One way to think scientifically. And that is to think in the way that leads the most direct and simple route to the goal. No one has yet formulated a briefer or less complex system. And I'm gonna reiterate his system again. So read this book every day. He doesn't say read it right before we jump on the Zoom or read it every, of course in 1910 there were no Zooms. Um, or there were no phones, there were no TVs, there were no way to communicate except by like a letter and a horse. But he says, read this book every day, keep it with you and commit it to memory. Solve your problem, get rich. So the principles in this book, number one, there is a thinking stuff from which all things are made and which in its original state permeates, penetrates, and fills the inner spaces of the universe. That's God. There's one source, right? Source, God, the infinite intelligence, substance, that quantum field. All of that means the same thing. Some people may not agree, but whatever. God's not a person that sits up there in the sky and like, cast things down on you. That's ridiculous. So um, we're just going to throw that one out the window right there. <laughs> okay. There's a God substance and essence um, that's in all of us, which is why we are all one. We're all connected. We're all a piece of that. And that's inside each of us. And so it's tapping into that, that God self inside of you. So there is one substance, a thought in this substance produces the thing that is imaged by the thought. So whatever you think can be produced, can be produced by source. A person can form things in his thought and by impressing his thought upon formless substance can cause the things he thinks about to be created. So you can cause the things that you think about to be created, right? In order to do this, here's the catch, right? A person must pass from the competitive to the creative mind. He must form, so no more competition. Remember, we've talked about that. You're not competing against me for loyal customers or distributors. I'm not competing against anybody else, nobody in the company, nobody in the world, right? Because there are billions of people, there's enough to go around for everybody. So when you stay tapped into that creative source, your unlimited supply is there for you. And when you want to get competitive and you want to, like I had a girl, um, yesterday did a host a post for me and she had 35 comments and she's like, gosh, there's so many people. And like six of them became customers last night off her post. And, um, she's like, I, I don't know. I don't know if I have enough time for this. And, um, uh, but gosh, I really would like to get in on some of that money, but isn't the market saturated? And I'm like, Oh girl, <laughs> I don't know if I have time to go into all this right now, but no, it's not saturated. We have 7.7 .7 billion people on this planet. The planet's saturated, <laughs> but we are not saturated as a company, <laughs> right? Because all these people that I just messaged had not heard of It Works in the Skinny Brew. <laughs> so there's 35 of your friends right now and you've got like 1,200. So anyway, there's no competition. I was like, there's, there, there's plenty of market. There's plenty of places. The market's not saturated. There's not too many. Where is the market saturated really on anything? Like besides Amazon, <laughs> Amazon's everywhere, you know, like the, the boxes get dropped off all day long, but, and that's not even, even at that, right? So be in that creative plane. So a person must form a clear mental picture of the things he wants. Remember when he talked about writing a letter? writing a letter to someone, you're not going to go like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and hope that he figures out what you're trying to say. <laughs> so that's where you have that clear mental picture of the things that you want. You're going to write them down clearly. I want this. I want that. I want to experience this. I want to become this. I want to have this. I want to do this. I want to go here. There was a great book I read years ago. I've actually read it like five or six times um, because I, I've read it in like book one time and then the rest of the times listen to it on audio um but it was um circle maker mark batterson and it was fabulous he had a section in his book where you wrote out the different types of goals that you wanted to accomplish whether it be a physical types things emotional type things experiential type things um family things personal things and he had you go out like 
three months, six months, a year, a couple years, five years, 10 years, even more out. And so it was, it was very detailed. I remember I ended up having like 12 pages of goals. I need to find that notebook and see which I, what things I crossed off. But um, you've got to have those clear mental pictures of what you want written down. There's power in the pen. So when you think about it, thoughts do create but then you put forth that power, that pen, that action, right? And hold this picture in your thoughts with fixed purpose to get what you want and the unwavering faith that he does get what he wants, closing his mind against all that may tend to shade his purpose, dim his vision and quench his faith, quench his faith, sorry, no quench, quench, huh. quench, quench, same thing, close enough, either way. So you have to have your purpose and your faith, unwavering faith, and close your mind against all that may tend to shake your purpose. So that may be close your mind against your best friend who says, you're never going to do that. You can't do that. Nobody makes money at those things. You can't be successful that way. Oh, that's only for certain people. Maybe it's your mom. Maybe it's your coworker. Close your mind against people that dim your vision or quench your faith or shake your purpose. That means you may have to say, hey, guess what? I've got big goals, dreams. I'm doing this. I'm making this happen. I'm staying committed. I'm reading this book daily. I'm applying these principles and I'm putting forth the action. So that way I do receive the blessings. And if they're like, you're crazy, you're nuts, whatever. Okay, great. Well, I'll talk to you when I get rich. Be back. Bye. <laughs> right. And I, I can say that because I've done that to my mom. I've done that um, when I got started 15 years ago in network marketing. She was like, no, you need to neither be a, you need to be a teacher or you need to be a stay at home mom, but you should not be getting anything else. And I'm like, and you are who to tell me what <laughs> you have your opinion. That's great, but you're not going to get in my way of my goals and dreams to be able to have flexibility and freedom and earn unlimited amounts of income and be able to, to do everything I want with my kids and my family. So we didn't talk for a couple of years. And then we did again, after my daughter went in the hospital, kind of had to suck it up, you know, her life was on the line there. Okay. Let's mend things up here. And uh, cause she helped out with my son a little bit because he was younger and obviously needed some care. He was two. And so she helped out um, some weekends and stuff like that. But then when I got into It Works 10 years ago, it was the same thing. Don't you dare do one more thing. Don't you go try to do one more thing. You just need to stay home, be a stay-at-home mom, take care of these kids. And I'm like, and we're going to have this conversation again. So our relationship will end immediately. If you're going to tell me that, try to make me feel guilty or put your beliefs onto me, I know what I feel in my soul, what I want to do, what I have to do, what I'm called to do, and your opinion of what you think I should do is not going to stop me or stand in my way. And if you want to say something about it again, we will no longer speak. Remember, we've done that, been down that road before. Do you understand that? I'm an adult. I'll make my own decisions. You're an adult. You go make yours. And so it was like, okay, whatever, kind of treaded lightly. Um, but it's been the last, probably I would say maybe, I don't know, maybe the last three years, four years, um, we left, we've been down here five and a half years. So maybe the last three years, um, things are very neutral with us now, which is fine. It's good. Neutral is good. Uh, we talk maybe once a month. She'll call to see the kids, talk to the kids like FaceTime or something. Um, but she knows very clearly the lines and the boundaries. And that Stacy's going to do what Stacy's going to do for her soul's purpose. You can choose to not live out your soul's purpose and stay stuck on your hamster wheel. It's totally fine. That's your choice. But you will not impose your beliefs about what you think I should be doing onto me. And so we have a neutral relationship now, which is fine. My dad, on the other hand, wants to know where my N95 is. And I'm like, um, we don't own masks. So we will have no more conversations. Goodbye. And it's that simple for me, cut and dried. <laughs> it's black and white. <laughs> so anyways, you guys, you're going to have to have, you're going to have those situations in your life. You're going to have those people and you're an adult. So you're going to have to make big girl, big boy decisions as an adult on what you want to do. And maybe you're like, well, it's not that cut and dried. It's not that easy. It's not that simple. <sighs> you know, it, it's a choice and those choices have to be made. And then you stick to those choices and you move forward with that. 
and people hopefully will will grow and evolve in life and sometimes they don't right but again for this to work for this to work this last part is like probably the most important where he says you have to have your clear mental picture hold that picture with a fixed purpose unwavering faith and to get what you want you have to close your mind off against all that may tend to shake your purpose dim your vision or quench your faith it's that simple because if you let them get in your head if you let them tell all this negativity all the reasons why maybe you'll talk yourself out of it maybe you'll give up maybe you'll get down on yourself and you won't stay true to what you truly want maybe not but i'm just saying you can't let those things invade your your thoughts you can't let those things especially as women they tend to get more emotional you can't let those things take your emotions on a roller coaster okay so this is like he's like suck it up buttercup we gotta go right so in addition to all this we shall now see that we must live and act in a certain way and so that's what chapter 11 is is acting in a certain way and i got nigel found another ping pong ball under the bed out of all places in the entire house she wants to put it under the bed nigel come here let me see if i can get this one out come here come here let me see where's your ping pong ball no you don't have it it's under the bed good girl good girl good girl yeah she i don't know why she she literally before i started this video she was laying here on the floor sleeping i grabbed my computer so quietly off of the table and she wakes up and jumps up and starts running circles around and i'm like bless your little soul stay focused in the midst of distractions right all right so thought and action here we go acting a certain way i love 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 this chapter and i took lots of extra look lots of extra notes all over this so i'm going to hit on some of these key points because this is super important that you guys oh, pick up on this so thought is the creative power or the impelling force which causes the creative power to act thinking in a certain way will bring you riches but <laughs> but you must not rely upon thought alone paying no attention to personal action that is the rock upon which many otherwise scientific thinkers meet shipwreck the failure to connect through thought with personal action your action is where the blessings come in god blesses your actions he does not bless your sitting there on your couch praying it's gonna happen but yet you do nothing about it okay so that's what this chapter is all about is the personal activity the steps that you take scary out of your comfort zone all by yourself not sure what to do all of that has to happen in order for those floodgates to open up and the blessings to start pouring in okay so a person must not only think but his personal action must supplement his thought you must give every person more in use value than you give in cash value. So by thought, you can cause the gold in the hearts of the mountains to be impelled towards you, but it's not going to mine itself, refine itself, coin itself into double eagles and come rolling along the roads, seeking its way into your pocket. Under the impelling power of the Supreme Spirit, people's affairs will be so ordered that someone will be led to mine the gold for you your thought makes all things animate and inanimate work to bring you what you want but your personal activity must be such that you can rightly receive what you want when it reaches you you must so arrange your own business affairs that you may be able to receive it when it comes I had somebody the other day tell me i just want to make ten thousand dollars a month and not even have to be here or do anything every day okay well you just keep thinking that and we'll see how that works out for you you want to make ten thousand dollars a month but yet you want to actually put no effort into it whatsoever you just want it rolling in without you having to do anything wow wouldn't that be amazing how's that gonna happen how are you going to get paid ten thousand dollars a month to do nothing 
I mean, unless you win the lottery and I guess it's maybe like a royalty check kicking out or something every month. I don't know. But still, then you'd have to go buy the ticket. So I didn't say a word. I'm like, mm, I'm not going to say a word. I'm going to just let that ride. That was, I didn't have enough time for that conversation. It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way at all. You have to put your, your purpose, your faith, your activity into it. You must give every person more in use value than he gives you in cash value. So here's the trade-off, all right? The trade-off is you are giving more to them in use value than what you're getting in return in cash value. Prime example, loyal customer. Before they become a loyal customer, they have questions. They wanna know about the products. They want you to educate them. They want you to send them information. They wanna ask you questions. I had one potential customer today ask me 50 million questions. She's like, I'm so sorry I'm asking so many questions. And I said, it's all right, girl, that's what I do. I answer all these questions. She didn't sign up as a loyal customer yet. She said she was interested in being a distributor, maybe. She asked him 5 million questions about being a distributor. I answered all those questions about being a distributor. We went through all kinds of stuff about the products. I sent her PDFs. I sent her stuff on the, the business, everything. I have got paid nothing from that at this point yet. But I've offered her so much great information about how ways that she can get healthy, how she can lose the extra weight she wants to lose, how she can use the, earn the additional income she wants. But she has not given me any cash value yet. But I've given her lots in use value, lots of options, lots of information for her. Okay, so that's what you want to think about. If she signs up as a customer distributor, I don't want to say I don't care. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm putting that out. I know it'll come back. It'll come back tenfold. That's the law of reciprocity. I'm not going to hold her to be accountable to sign up with me because I gave her information or because I spent time on her. And that's super important that you understand that. You're giving out the information, you're educating people, you're helping people, you're sharing information with people, you're giving them lots of use value you may not take anything from them in cash value. Or what if they do sign up as a customer and you make, let's see, they order a skinny brew, which is 40 BV and you make 15% of that. So that's $6, Woohoo! <laughs> you made six bucks and you may have chatted to this girl for three hours. Now think about it. That doesn't seem right, does it? But what happens is when you give, give, effortlessly like just I'm going to give you the information I'm going to share it with you I'm, you make your own decisions I'm gonna, but I'm going to give you the information I'm going to educate you I'm going to tell you what worked for me I'm going to I'm going to give you this blah, blah 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 right and you're not expecting anything return she signs up as a customer you make six you make 12 maybe you make 25 bucks off of what she orders but what happens is there's this there's this compound effect okay and we're going to get into that this compound effect when you do that without attachment to people when you're giving out so much information and helping people without anything expected in return from them, the return starts coming and it starts coming in tenfold. I woke up this morning to a loyal customer, a girl that messaged me. She goes, hey, I went to your website and signed up as a loyal customer. I'm like, cool. She's like, yeah, I got the pick two, pick three. I'm like, wait, what? I mean, we have pick two, pick three. How did that happen? I was awake like at midnight last night. It was just the BOGO, right? She knew that it was a pick two, pick three before I even did. And then she ended up ordering like four of, or um, five, six, five, six, four or five different things. So she ordered a lot. So I was like, great, that's awesome. So you have to give out that, that use value to people, okay? And that's when you get that back. It starts multiplying tenfold. So there's a scientific use of thought consists in forming a clear and distinct mental image of what you want and holding fast to your purpose to get what you want and realizing with grateful faith, grateful, grateful faith, that you do get what you want. So your faith and purpose positively impress your vision upon formless substance, which has the same desire for more life than you have. And this vision received from you sets all the creative forces at work in and through their regular channels of action, but directed toward you. So it's not your part to guide or supervise the creative process. All you have to do with it is to retain, retain your vision, stick to your purpose and maintain your faith and gratitude. So again, you're putting it out there. You don't pick where it comes back from. 
I had a girl go to my website. She didn't even contact me a couple days ago and she ordered like 106 BV worth of product, tons of stuff, like 200 and something dollars worth of product. Cause she got a bunch of the, the pick stuff and she never even contacted me. She never reached out to me at all. And so I, I reached out to her. I was like, Hey girl, I saw you became a customer. She's like, yeah, I got to get back on track. I've been following you. I'm so excited. All the stuff you're sharing, blah, blah, blah. Like we never had a conversation. Never even had a conversation. I'm like, where did you get my website? <laughs> Maybe my Facebook? I don't know. <laughs> where did you get it? But she went to my, she found me and pff, signed up as a customer. Didn't even talk to her. Right. But I probably talked to 50, 60, 80 people that didn't, you know, that I did give information to that didn't buy something on the spot. Right. That's what happens when you're messaging with people and sharing information with people. So you are, your part is not to guide or supervise the creative process. All you have to do is retain your vision, stick to your purpose and maintain your faith and gratitude, but you must act in a certain way so that you can appropriate what is yours when it comes to you and so that you can meet the things you have in your picture and put them in their proper place as they arrive. You can really see the truth of this. When things reach you, they will be in the hands of others who will ask an equivalent for them and you can only get what is yours by giving the other person what is rightfully his. So again, by thought, the thing that you want is brought to you. By action, you receive it. Your pocketbook's not going to be transformed into a, a big old, you know, they call it like a fortuner's purse, which shall always be full of money without effort on your part. Like the person that said they want to make $10,000 a month and they don't want to do anything for it. They don't even want to be in the office. And I'm like, it's not going to work that way. Again, you will always have a pocketbook full of money if you put forth effort. You have to give God something to bless. This is a critical point in the science of getting rich right here where thought and personal action must be combined. That's so huge. By thought, the thing you want is brought to you, but by action, you receive it. Action is the people you're talking to right? Actually having conversations with, not the messages you're sending, not the posts you're doing, but the actual conversations. The people that you're meeting up with, the people that you're inviting to the virtuals, and the conversations you're having with those people. Now, this is super important. Whatever your action is, it, whatever your action is to be, it's evident that you must act now. You cannot act in the past, and it's essential to the clearness of your mental vision that you dismiss the past from your mind. Again, he started out chapter 10 with saying, don't tell all your old stories. Let the stuff go. And he says right here again, it is essential to the clearness of your mental vision that you dismiss the past from your mind. Be in the present moment. You cannot act in the future. The future is not even here yet. And you can't tell how you will want to act in any future situation until it is arrived. Let the past go. Be in the present moment. So this morning, I pop open my Instagram and um, my chiropractor had shared something that was just so perfect. And it says, um, if you are depressed, you are living in the past. If you are anxious, you are living in the future. If you are at peace, you are living in the present. And this fits perfectly to this right here. If you're depressed, you're living in the past. There's something in the past that is bringing you down. Is it a loss of somebody in your family? Is it a loss of a situation in your life? Is it past circumstances, traumas, things from your childhood? If you're depressed, something from your past is keep, you're staying back there. So you have to decide, I'm choosing to let this go. I'm choosing to move forward. Write the things down. This is perfect time. The full moon's on Sunday. And we all know that the moon affects everything, right? The water comes in and out on a regular basis. The tide is affected daily, a couple times a day by the moon. So we know it has uh, force on people, right? 
on everything in life, our planet's spinning. We're not stationary, so things change. So this is a great time to write down things that you that are limiting to you, that are um, not serving you, that make you feel um, guilt or shame or resentment or fear or anger or worry or frustration or sadness. So write these things down. Just make a list or write paragraphs. People situations. You know how sometimes you get these conversations in your head of situations with people and you replay them over and over and over and over again? What you focus on expands. <laughs> it's best to write the conversations down. Write all of that down. She said this. No, I said this. It made me feel like this. You did this and then you said this. and then la, 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 la. Write it all down. One time, I, I've done this a gazillion times for literally 12 years I've been writing stuff and burning it. And one time I sat down last year and I sat down to write just like a couple little things um, about Brent and I ended up writing 16 pages front and back. I'm like, oh, snap. Okay, well, where did that come from? I mean, we've been together almost 24 years. So there's stuff, right? We all have stuff. And so I went outside. This is what you do with it when you write stuff down right? Whether it's words or whether it's paragraphs or sentences, whatever. You go outside, you fold your paper up, and then you light it on fire. You burn it, okay? And when you burn it, then it's gone. Blessings, goodbye. All of the toxicity of whatever was in these pages is gone. Then you want to come back in and you want to write down love. If you wrote nothing down, fill these spaces in me with love with peace, with joy, with happiness, with abundance of all things great from God. And if you want, you can get real clear on your vision <laughs> and write down all the things that you want in your life, right? Write those things down. And so anyways, like I said, I've done this a gazillion times. Well, um, I went in um, to one of my friends, um, her husband does therapy on Taylor. So I was talking to them last week and I was telling her about this. We, she was talking about some stuff from her past, her parents, and extreme trauma in her childhood. And so I said, hey, why don't you do this? Because she does not need her mom or dad in her life. They are just, God bless these people's souls. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. And I said, so I said, let's just, you just write some stuff down. Write it down. Burn it. And so anyways, I went in there today to get my facial and cause she does, she's an esthetician in that office. And she's like, girl, I did this last week. And I, I had some time while my client was in here getting some other stuff done. So I wrote it all down. I went outside to burn it. It would not light on fire. It would not light on fire. And I said, well, sometimes that happens. You know, sometimes we just don't really want to let go of that stuff. You know, it's ingrained in us. It's, it's wired. It's all this, right? And she goes, so I thought I'll come inside. I'll go in the bathroom. I'll put it in the toilet and I'll, I'll light it on fire right over the toilet. And then I'll just, you know, it can burn down in there. She goes, no, it lit up in flames, smoke, one piece of paper, smoke was everywhere. I thought I was going to burn the building down. My clients in the room next door freaking out because she thought the place was on fire and I could not get this fire out and it would not stop smoking one piece of paper. It was crazy. It was the most insane thing that's ever happened. And I was like, mm, yeah, I can tell you the crazinesses that have happened when I burn paper, burn stuff. It just depends on what's on it. Sometimes it's like boom in flames. And other times it's like, no, nah, we're going to make you work for this burn. <laughs> it takes 30 minutes to burn a piece of paper. And so anyway, she, I said, so what's happened since? And she goes, well, a relationship that was extremely toxic has completely done a 360. I got the most amazing love note. I got flowers. I got dinner. She goes, mind you, dinner was a salad from Wawa, but I still got dinner. And <laughs> she's like, it has been amazing since I did that. And I was like, that's great. That's a great start. That's a great start. She's like, yeah, I told my therapist and he was like, that's fabulous. You should do that again. <laughs> and so anyways, you guys, if you're living in the past, if you're in, if you're depressed, if you're stressed, anxious, worried, fear, all those kinds of things, you've got to release the past. So this is a good time to write down some stuff and let go of it. Obviously that needed to come in right now. And then again, if you're anxious, you could be living in the future. You're worried about what's going to happen next, even though you don't know what's going to happen next. So the present moment is the peaceful moment, just being present. And that takes practice. I'm not perfect at all. Nobody's perfect. 
it takes practice before I hopped on here. I'm like, let me do a quick 11 minute little meditation. Let me just get everything from the day. It's been a busy day. Let me get everything back in here where it belongs so I can stay in the present moment and tapped into that connection that I need to be tapped into, right? So what he says on here is if you act in the present with your mind on the future, your present action will be with a divided mind and will not be effective. Put your whole mind into the present action daily. So if you act in the present with your mind in the future, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm worried about the future. And obviously, you know, we said we know what do I want? What do I desire? You write that stuff down, right? And you, you are grateful for those things as if they've already happened. But your action has to be in the present moment, acting now. You can't act in the future, right? Because you don't know what's going to happen in the future. So it's acting now in the present moment, putting your whole mind into the present action daily. Don't work, or sorry, don't wait for a change in environment before you act. Get your change of an environment by action. There's never any time but now, and there never will be any time but now. So if you're to ever begin to make ready for the reception of what you want, you must begin now in your present environment. Even if it's your current job, your current situation, you still have to act now. You can't wait until this. You can't wait until this. I can't tell you how many times over the years people have said, well, I'm going to wait until I make this much money, or I'm going to wait until I have this many customers. I'm going to wait until I'm this rank. Then I'll do that. You have to act in the present moment as if, right? So it's probable that your actions are at least for some time to come will be the same ones that you have been performing for some time in the past. So you're going to do your best in your current position acting the best in the current environment that you're already in, but holding that faith and purpose, the vision of yourself in the better environment, but acting upon your present environment with all your heart, with all your strength and with all your mind. So hold the vision of yourself in the right business with the purpose to get into it and the faith that you will get into it and are getting into it, but act in your present situation in your present business. That's how you get into the better one. I'm not gonna read that in part to you guys again because we just really went over that in depth. But again, hold that vision of yourself in the job you want and you act with faith and purpose on that job you have and you will certainly get the job that you want. So your vision and faith will set the creative force into motion to bring it towards you. And your action, again, your action will cause the forces in your own environment to move you toward the place you want. So in closing the chapter, he reads that part again. I'm not gonna read it again to you because you guys can read that. But again, it is so that you may receive what you want. When it comes, a person must act now upon the people and the things in your present environment. Okay, so chapter 12, kind of the same thing. I got a, a lot of stuff on this one page that is just like crazy. So this is efficient action. <laughs> this, is, this is so perfect, efficient action. So this is about doing your job where you're at, what you're currently doing and doing it effectively. Even if you want out of your job, say you're like, I want to, I don't want to be in this job anymore. I want out. You still have to do your, the best you can do in the job that you're currently in. So you can advance only by being larger than your present place. And no one is larger than his, per, his present place who leaves undone any of the work pertaining to that place. So make sure that whatever it is you're doing, that you're doing it effectively. So evolution is, is caused by the excess. So when you, when an organism has more life than can be expressed in the functions of its own plane, it develops organs of a higher plane. So you do the best you're in right now, but you're then developing that next level, okay? So you're getting rich depends upon your applying the principle in your own affairs. So every day is either a successful day or a day of failure. You can't foresee the results of even the most trivial act. 
You don't know the workings of the forces that may have been set in motion on your behalf. So much may be depending on doing some simple things and it may be the very thing which is upon the door of opportunity to the greatest possibilities. So you can never know all the combinations which the supreme intelligence is making for you in the world of things and human affairs. Your neglect or failure to do some small thing may cause a long delay in getting what you want. So do every day all that can be done. You're not to overwork. This is not to do tons and tons of things that you should don't do tomorrow's work or next week's work. Don't try to get five days work worth of work done in one day, but to do all that you can do in that day. So let's say for example, um, you've got a list of things to do, phone calls to make, people to follow up with, um, and your own personal stuff, right? Errands you've got to run, things you've got to pick up, that kind of stuff. And instead you decide, I'm just going to sit here and binge out on a Netflix series. I'm just over everything and I'm just going to binge. Did you do all that you could do that day effectively? Did you complete all that could be completed that day effectively? If you get up the next morning and you chose to watch six hours of Netflix and you didn't get any of the things done, you didn't send any messages, you didn't talk to anybody, you didn't do any of your follow-ups, you didn't even run your own personal errands, what does that say? Because what he's saying is you, your neglect or failure to do some small thing may actually cause a long delay in getting what you want. You can never know all the combinations which the supreme intelligence is making for you in the world of things and of human affairs. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes what God's up to. You don't know. You don't know. You know how you people say right place, right time, right people, right place, right time. If you're not out there picking up that laundry from the cleaners, or if you didn't go to the grocery store and get the items that you needed to get, or you didn't run those errands that you were going to run that needed to be ran, maybe your next rock star was in line there waiting for you and you weren't there. Maybe you were going to bump into them at the grocery store and you weren't there. Maybe they were ready to sign up with you and you didn't respond because you were binging. You were neglecting what you were supposed to be doing for it to be productive for that day. So instead they signed up with somebody else or maybe they were, you know, whatever, whatever, right? You don't know. You just don't know. So it's not to be fearful, but it's to be aware that, that the work that's to be done the action that's to be done needs to be done on a daily basis and do all that you can do in that day and do it effectively so that you do set those things into motion so that you are receiving that back in return. You're having those people that start coming back in tenfold, right? So it's really not the number of things that you do, but the efficiency of each and every separate action. So like yesterday, um, I had, it was closed day, right? And I'm like, I've got to sit down and send some messages. I need to send some follow-ups with people. And so I decided, okay, here's, this had popped in my head a couple of days ago. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do that on closed day. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit down, but I've got this girl coming over to get scanned. We're going to chit chat. Brent will be home. His uncle and aunt are coming over with their daughter. They want to see the house before they go out on the boat. That's going to take me at least an hour. I've got to do that. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I need everybody out of the house. I need to sit down. I need to focus, have these people that have to be reached out to and contacted. So everybody left and Trey's in his room chilling. He's good. Taylor's at camp. I'm like, okay, I have two hours. And in this two hours, I'm going to sit here in this chair and I'm going to send out messages. I'm going to send out messages. I'm going to send out messages. I'm going to send out messages to follow up. Huh? Look at that. And at the top of this page, what's it say? <laughs> follow up. That's hilarious. Don't put it up. Don't put it off. Follow up. And so anyway, so that's what I did. Two hours. And I had some people respond back right away, but nothing, you know, concrete or anything. So I was like, all right, buddy, we got to get to the chiropractor before we get to, uh, I take you to basketball. And then I got to go pick Taylor and Kirsten up from camp. So let's get going. Two hours was up. It was done, flew by and we're out the door. So I get to the chiropractor. I'm sitting there. We're waiting. He had somebody already back there. So I'm like, Ooh, 
I'm going to do a host a post. And I look at the clock and I'm like, oh, it's like four o'clock. I don't normally do one at four o'clock. Usually I do one a little bit later because of timing on Facebook, but I thought, oh, I'm going to do one right now. Let me find a good picture. So I scroll back to a picture of a host post that I had done last year and where I was fanning out the money. And I was like, oh, I'll do this one. Great. I had just got back from the gym. So I had all my sports bra on my shorts and I was out by my pool. So I posted it. And I get done with the chiropractor 30 minutes later and there's like 60 something comments. And I'm like, holy cow, are you joking right now? Oh my God. So of course I'm like, okay, well, I have to drive. I have to do all this. Da, 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 da. So I'm like, Trey, just give me a second. Let me respond back real quick. And just, you know, send my little doop, doop, doop that I send real quick to these people. And then we can get on the road. And then his basketball, we ended up having to wait 30 minutes in the car. The coach wasn't there and then time, blah, blah, blah. So I, I got to send some more messages. Well, anyway, by the end of the night lesson, I think I was like 120 comments or something on that, that host to post. And I signed up, I don't know, 12 or so um, loyal customers from it last night. Um, and I had a lot of loyal customers, uh, people that posted for me that actually were current loyal customers that went in and ordered the BOGO. So I was like, wow, that was crazy. But two hours of focused, intentional work led to an idea to do a host post right now and just do one line, just do one line. That's it. One line in this uh, cursive font and just use this picture Pfft, gone blew up. And I'm still messaging with people from that all today, all today from the people that put their post up, all the people that I messaged inbox, I'm messaging from it today. So be efficient in what you're doing. So if you're saying, oh, I'm going to, you know, so like I said with Trey, I had 30 minutes in the car, 30 minutes waiting on the basketball. He's talking to his buddies, whatever, trying to figure stuff out. Boom. I'm back in and I'm focused for 30 minutes. Okay. So be efficient in whatever time you're doing instead of trying to do this here, this here, that here, multitasking right? That's like the biggest epic fail in the world because we're really scattering our energy everywhere. And I know that I feel that. And I can feel, I don't sit down to do work when I know if I would have tried to send out messages in between the girl coming over and his family coming over and all that, I, it wouldn't have had the same impact. So sitting down and taking your energy and going, and it's here. Just like when I sat down in the car, okay, I got 30 minutes here. And I'm going to message these people when we got home, got the girls home, got them in bed, 830. Okay, done. Boom. I'm here. I was on that computer on my phone from 830 until 1230 in the morning. Here, energy, focus, concentration, done. We brought in just a couple, a couple of us actually. And I, I think I brought in maybe almost a thousand BB during that time. And we had BOGO, which was 15 and 30 BB, but they were ordering other stuff too, obviously. But just intention, efficient, focus, okay? So be efficient in what you do because every efficient act is a success in itself. And every act of your life is an efficient one. Your whole life will be a success. So every efficient act is a success in itself. And if every act of your life is an efficient one, your whole life must be a success. It's either success or failure. So that's super important that you understand that like this, the cause of failure is doing too many things in an inefficient manner and not doing enough things in an efficient manner. This is the exact science right here to getting rich. You will see that it is self-evident proposition that if you do not do any inefficient acts, and if you do a sufficient number of efficient acts, you'll become rich. So again, the cause of failure is doing too many things in an inefficient manner. And back in 1910, they didn't have the word multitasking. This is what he's talking about. I'm multitasking. I'm getting 1,200 things done at once. And I'm not saying I don't respond back to people and fold some laundry and I get it, right? But when you want to be efficient and you really want to get something done, you need to sit down and focus into it. And that's what he's saying. You'll see that it is a self-evident proposition that if you do not do any inefficient acts and if you do a sufficient number, which means a good number of efficient acts, you'll become rich. If now it is possible for you to make each act an efficient one, you see again that the getting of riches is reduced to an exact science. Just like math. 
do everything you do efficiently, effectively, and do all that you can do in that day, but don't overdo it. Don't try to, I've got to get 50 million things done. Like um, be realistic with your time. I've got this much time. I'm gonna put all, um, that's why they have power hours. If any of you guys have ever done a power hour, that's why I do power hours. Power hours, you just sit here and you do these things right here in this block of time. You don't do anything else. You don't deal with your kids running around. You don't answer questions from your husband. You don't deal with whatever else is going on in life. You don't watch the TV in the background, catch at your show. You do the efficient things in that block of time. Maybe you have five power hours a day. I mean, think about it. Think about it, you guys. If you want to get rich, like how many hours a day are you going to need to work? You're not going to need to work 24 out of 24, right? But if you really want to be rich and say, I don't know what your rich is compared to my rich, right? Where rich is different for everybody. But you're going to need to put forth the time into it. You're going to have to put forth a su sufficient amount of time that is based on action, that income producing activity, that action. So what would that be? And, and let's say you're starting out and maybe you have a full-time job and you've got kids and responsibilities in life and maybe you can only devote two hours a day. Maybe there's, maybe there's a half hour on your lunch break. Maybe there's a half hour. Let's say there's a half hour in the morning. You can get up early and respond back to messages from people from the night before. Maybe you do a half hour at lunch. Maybe you do a full hour after work. Maybe you do a full hour after the kids are in bed, right? But this one, hubby and I watch TV. Well, do you want to get rich or do you want to watch other people who are rich on TV? You have to decide. So there, that's where that conversation comes in. Like, guess what? I'll never forget. It was, it's been a good 14 years ago. Whenever Brent was like, I don't like that you're staying up later than I am. We always went to bed together. And I'm like, yeah, well, my business runs at night. <laughs> like things that people are messaging, they're responding when their kids are in bed, when their spouses are in bed. You like to go to bed at 9, 30, 10 o'clock. I never do anyways. I'm more like 11, 12 o'clock kind of person. So love you. I'll wake you up when I get to bed if you want to tell me good night. But you go to bed when you're going to bed. I got to work. I'm, this is my time, right? Instead, and during the day, I, you know, I mean, there's, you do stuff during the day, you message with people, but it's not as intense as it is at night, right? I do Zooms at night. I respond back. People are, people are blowing my phone up in the evening because that's when their kids are bed and they're relaxing. And not that it's every single night that I'm on, you know, I can't stop. I can't stop. I put it down, but it is definitely more of a prominent time. But you have to pick those times and be consistent with those times that work for you and know that it's, you're not going to get rich working two hours a day, right? To get, think about your paycheck that you're currently getting at, if you, at your current job. They're expecting you to be there full-time hours, right? And whatever they're paying you, let's say you make 20 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour and you're working 40 hours a week. That's 800 bucks right? Two times four is eight. Is that right? 800 bucks. So you make 800 bucks, take out your taxes. Of course you make like 500 bucks. <laughs> okay. So 500 bucks a week to work 40 hours, 20 bucks an hour. Maybe you make more than that, but I'm just doing for my brain math purposes. That's it. Right? So think about it works your business. You work 40 hours a week, 40 like clock in power hours a week. Do you think you're going to only make 500 bucks? It's diamond. It's 2000 bucks. What happens if you did it on a consistent basis? If you consistently worked 40 hours. Now, remember, we have 168 hours in the week. We all get 168 hours a week. You work 40. Say you sleep 50. That's like seven hours of sleep a night. 50 hours sleeping, that's 90. You get 168. What are you doing with the other 72 hours? You worked, you slept. 70 hours left. What are you doing? Well, I've got kids. Okay, great. Say you play with them, you take them to their ball games, their ballet, their whatever, right? Run them all over God's creation. 
maybe 30 hours. Feed them, bathe them, everything, homework, 30 hours. There ain't no way you're spending 30 hours a week with your kids, but whatever. So 30 hours, let's just say 30 hours. I'm just telling you, when you put them in school, there is no 30 hours with those children, right? They come home from school. By the time they get home, you got like maybe a three, four hour window and it's their bedtime maybe five and they're, if they're in high school, but seriously, right? They're so, and most of it, if they're in activities, you're watching them do something. So let's just say 30. What are you doing with the other 40 hours? 40 hours. Don't tell me you're grocery shopping and cleaning your house. There ain't nobody cleans their house for 40 hours a week. So 40 hours a week, you've played with your kids. If you don't have kids, oh my God, you have 70 hours. You can work your full-time current job that you have right now. You can sleep a lot of sleep every single night and you still have enough. You could almost work two more full-time jobs if you don't have children. And if you have children or a spouse, you got to spend time with them. I get it, but you can still work another full-time job. So that hours, those 40 hours, if you worked, it works consistently for 40 hours a week and did not stop doing that income producing activity times do you know that you would be making way more than $500 a week take home pay? I'm going to guarantee you that you will very quickly go way past diamond and go up to double diamond and triple diamond. A triple diamond works about 40 hours a week. That's where they get making that $8,000 plus dollars a month. That's where you're making that $2,000 a week. $1,500 to $2,000 a week working 40 hours. Now, it's not going to happen today overnight. You won't wake up tomorrow morning and be a triple diamond. You're going to need to put forth that efficient, consistent effort and action with that unwavering faith and purpose to see it through, right? That's how you get there. And that compound effect, that putting that out, sending those messages, chatting with those people, responding with people, following, inviting, 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 inviting people to the virtual parties, getting other people, people to other people to expose your potential people, customers and distributors to the product, to the business. Okay. So that is going to start to snowball. And if you put forth that time, not two hours a day, Two hours a day is not going to make somebody rich. It just does not work that way. There has to be that you're putting out that, that value to people. And if you're only putting out two hours worth of value a day, why would you expect to get so much crazy, insane amount back, right? God's blessing your actions, right? He's blessing what you're putting out to people, right? And you're not expecting that to come back, but he'll start blessing that tenfold or more, hundredfold, thousandfold when you stay consistent with that, applying this, okay? So you see again that getting rich is reduced to an exact science and you can make each and act a success because all power is working with you and all power cannot fail. Power is at your service and to make each act efficient, you have only to put power into it. So every action is either strong or weak. And when every action is strong, you are acting in a certain way, which will make you rich. I go back to that two hours yesterday. Like that was intense. I had my exact message copied, pasted. Oh, I just got a new little customer. Hang on. <laughs> I just got a notification. I was not joking. I'm like, wait, what? Who's my new little customer? Ha, huh, sweet. Okay. Just popped up on my computer. New little customer who emailed. I'm like, wait, what? See, I don't even know who this person is. Yay, <laughs> new little customer. Okay, anyway, <laughs> take that intense time, right? And it wasn't even a girl I messaged. That's fabulous. So even it's either strong or weak. And with every action strong, you are getting, you are acting a certain way, which will make you rich. And every act can be made strong and efficient by holding your vision while you were doing it and putting your whole power, your faith and purpose into it. Do things efficiently. And this last part, I love, 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 love this. Ready? If all power goes into every act, no matter how commonplace, how commonplace, copy, paste messages, copy, paste messages. But my energy, my intention, my power was in it. If all power goes into every act, no matter how commonplace, every act will be a success itself. And since it's the nature of things that every success opens the way to other successes, your progress toward what you want 
and the progress of what you want towards you will become increasingly rapid. Here's what I'm talking about when I talk about the compound effect, the snowball effect. If all power goes into every act, every act will be a success. And since it's the nature of things that every success opens the way to other successes, your progress toward what you want and the progress of what you want towards you will become increasingly rapid. Your consistency will produce increasingly rapid results. Remember that successful action is cumulative in its results. Successful action is cumulative in its results. The universe likes fast. Since the desire for more life is inherent in all things, when a person begins to move towards larger life, more things attach themselves to him and the influence of his desire is multiplied. Like this part here, like it, I've, I've been using the snowball analogy literally for 15 years. When you start your business, you've got to get the snowball together. I'm going to let people know this is what I'm doing. I'm going to reach out to people. I'm going to talk to people. I'm going to invite people. I'm going to start letting people know what I'm doing. And you're building that snowball, right? And you're doing that and you're doing that. And guess what? And then customers start to come on board people decide to join your team and your snowball starts to get bigger, right? And then what happens when you roll it down the hill? It's going to start to go and get and pick up momentum, right? And it's going to start to get bigger and bigger and bigger until it turns into an avalanche. That's called residual income, okay? That avalanche, that's when you've done things day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. I am 15 years into network marketing. Not a year has gone by that I've made less than a six-figure income during that period of time, starting with my first year from this book because of consistent action. Now, do I work 10, 12 hours a day every single day? No. Are there some days that I don't pick up my phone? No, but there have been some times, right, where I'm like, I'm going to put this down. I'm going to enjoy like Saturday, the girl that came in town, my former student, right, that's 33 birthday, put the phone down. Right? We took our pictures and then I put the phone down. I didn't respond back to people. I'm like, this can wait till tomorrow. We are going to spend today. I'm going to be effective and efficient with you and spending time with you. And I can respond to those people tomorrow. It's not an emergency. It's totally fine. Right? And then what do I do? Okay, she's gone. Good. Let me get on the phone. <laughs> I need to respond back to these people because I like to respond right away. But we also have to be, you know, you have to live life too. Okay. But if you do that every day and you let every day go by and you're like, oh, I'll get back to that message later. Oh, a week goes by. Oh, sorry, I forgot to respond back to you. People don't want that. They want to be with people that are there. The, even if it's like, oh, hey, girl, sorry, I just got an appointment, just getting back to you. Even if a couple hours have gone by, I apologize that I didn't get back to them in a you know timely manner, which to me is like right away. <laughs> when the message comes up, I'm like, ding, and let me respond back to you. But if in the middle of something, I won't. I won't because I want to be efficient with what I'm doing, right? So yesterday when I was at the chiropractor with my son, my phone stayed in the car. I did that, or I did that post and then I, boom, done out. Not going to get back to it, right? Until we got in the car and we, then I was like, oh my God, this blew up. Okay, let me get you to basketball and let me get into this, right? So do every day all that you can do that day and to each act in an efficient manner. So in saying you must hold your vision while you're doing each act, however trivial or commonplace, I don't mean to say that it's necessary at all times to see the vision distinctly in smallest details, right? But spend practically all your spare time in this practice. So in your spare time is where you visualize the details of the things you want. So say it's um, a house you want. Say it's a car you want. Say it's a place you want to live or a vacation you want to go on. In your spare time, right, maybe you're driving down the road and you, you should not be messaging with people, right? So in that time, you if you're not listening to this book on audio, or even if you are and your mind starts to wonder, it can wonder to those fine details of you where you want to be, right? That's when you have that. So your working hours, you need only to mentally refer to the picture to stimulate your faith and your purpose and cause your best effort to be put forth. So 
if you want fast, if you want what you want fast, then spend your spare time in practicing holding the vision of what you want. So you guys, uh, thank you for being on here. And of course, as always, make sure you're in the chat. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to let me know, share anything exciting or awesome that pops up for you. And I'll plan on seeing you guys. We're going to finish the book next Wednesday. We will do chapters 13, 14, 15, and then obviously 16, just a teeny tiny little chapter. So I'll plan on seeing you guys next week. Thank you for being on here tonight.